Finally, it was proven at the end of the last college football season that it's better to be good or genius, Nick Saban, than to be lucky, Les Miles, the Mad Hatter. Mark Rogers TV with another college football preview, this time LSU 2012, and got to credit the Bayou Bengals off the top with completing one of the great regular season runs in recent memory. They defeated the Tide on the road in the regular season in overtime, of course, and they also defeated West Virginia on the road, the Big East champ, and Oregon in the season opener, the eventual Pac-12 and Rose Bowl champ, a top five team, Arkansas, top 10 team in the SEC, and also Auburn, Florida, and Georgia in the SEC title game. Then the Tigers' woeful passing attack was brutally exposed in the rematch 21-0 at the Superdome when Nick Saban had six weeks to prepare. So out at quarterback is Jordan Jefferson, and out at quarterback is Jarrett Lee. In steps, junior college transfer Zach Mettenberger. Mettenberger is a sophomore, played at LSU, but only got 11 snaps, 11 passes in mop-up duty. So he's inexperienced at this level, but he's proven as a JUCO player that he can make the throws down the field. He's got a big arm, and he's accurate. So LSU's not going to throw it anymore, but they're going to throw it downfield for points. But the core of this offense is always going to be the running game. Spencer Ware leads it. He turned in two great games early in the season last year uh, in defeating Oregon and Florida. He racked up 100 yards in each game. Then he failed a drug test, kicked off the team. Spencer Ware is now back, along with Michael Ford, who backed him up last season. He's dependable. He had almost 800 yards rushing and seven touchdowns. Michael Ford, tough between the tackles. And that running game is going to go again because the offensive line should be dominant again, led by Chris Falk and Alex Hurst. But what about the wide receivers? Highly touted, fast, athletic, but little production out of these guys, and you could blame the quarterbacks. So they're going to have to help out Mentenberger, and in particular Odell Beckham, who steps into the number one receiving role after he caught 41 passes. Reuben Randall's moved on to the NFL and we also mentioned that no other LSU receiver caught more than 14 last season. That includes James Wright. And we point to Wright because he's different than the other guys. He's got a chance to be the big possession guy. He's big and tough and physical. Now to the defense, LSU fans. And this is, of course, where you've made your mark and where LSU has risen to the elite of college football in the last 10 years. First of all, spearheaded with the innovation of Nick Saban. Sam Montgomery's a beast at tackle. Hit nine sacks last year. Anthony Johnson's a freak athletically, and that's saying something when you compare it to the rest of the LSU roster because there's speed all over the place. Kevin Minter holds down the linebacking core from the middle. Now we talk the big storyline of the offseason. The Honey Badger, gone. Tyron Matthew, the sweetness, gone out of the LSU defense. They're going to be strong, but no longer sweet. Matthew, gone kicked off the team for allegedly failing a drug test. The Honey Badger was marginal in coverage, but he created more big plays than we've seen any defender make in college football, going back to Roy Williams, or possibly Charles Woodson in Michigan. So this defense is led in the secondary by Eric Reed, and really that's the way it was last season. Matthew got the pub, but Reed was the leader with 76 stops. He's a great player and will be probably a top 15 pro pick. That's our look at LSU football as we look at the schedule. No big non-conference games this year for LSU. So the Tigers should lose uh, one game. Guess who that's going to be here in 2012. As again, the passing game is going to have to grow and going to have to step it up in the big games. Would love to hear what you have to say about LSU, the SEC, and college football on Mark Rogers TV.